And so the first demo that I'm gonna do uh, is provision the cluster that I'm gonna use for the rest of the talk. Uh, and I hope that one goes well, because if it doesn't, we're kind of stuck. Uh, and by the way, everything that I'm going to show you here, if you want to redo the same thing on your own, it's on a public GitHub repo, uh, which I'll call POSOC. <laughs> uh, that means Postgres on ZFS on Kubernetes. Um, when I was doing some research about uh, Postgres tuning on ZFS, I saw a, a really amazing page uh, with lots of tuning information, like absolutely mind-blowing, um, and they um, called it like Pozol, uh, Postgres on ZFS on Linux, and so I thought, okay, Pozoc is going to follow the same idea, but on Kubernetes. And there is a readme, uh, and normally all I have to do is just copy-paste uh, the commands from the readme. Actually, does it actually work if I do it like this? Only one way to find out. Um, okay, so um, this is going to provision a Kubernetes cluster on uh, Linode. Um, so uh, I'm using Linode in that demo. Um, they, they are not paying me to do this. <laughs> I just chose to, to use them because uh, it's pretty fast to spin up Kubernetes clusters on Linode. It's cheap enough. Um, and they have clusters pretty much, if, I mean, they have uh, you know, regions pretty much everywhere. And so in that case, I decided to provision in FR par, which means France, Paris. Now, hopefully, oh, booting, okay, okay. So we just need to give them a little bit of time. Uh, these nodes are going to come up, I'm hopeful. All right, so while the cluster is booting, let me, um, uh, let me tell you a few things uh, about the, the customer story for today, you know, uh, so, uh, and also plot twist, I'm the customer. I'm both like the provider and the customer in that scenario. Um, so the customer here is Ephemera Search. Um, so this is um, a website about preserving um, historical artifacts and in particular old mail. Uh, this is run by my partner uh, who may or may not actually be listening to me speaking about this right now, but I'm going to try to not say anything wrong. Uh, and so this this site is a database of old mail. Uh, as of today, there is about 1.7 million postcards. Uh, and there is also uh, exactly zero dollar of uh, investor money in it, uh, except maybe that one person who, who, who we, that we talked with at a, a genealogy conference uh, earlier this year and was like, wow, this is so cool. Can I donate some money to you guys? And we're like, yeah, sure. And he gave us 20 bucks. Um, and so we have a database of about 150 gigs which can seem a lot for 1.7 million postcard, uh, but um, this is because there is a lot of extra data uh, coming from the eBay integration. And I'm not going to go too deep into the details here because that's absolutely not relevant to today's conversation. What's interesting is that uh, historically, the website was running, uh, you know, with the full, uh, the thing you do when you are an early startup. So you use stuff like uh, Heroku or Clever Cloud and all the, uh, you know, all the SaaS that you can find so that you don't have to build too much things. Now, the problem is that at some point we basically had, you know, more than a grand uh, each month in infrastructure costs. Uh, and since we don't have investors, that means that the money completely comes out of our pockets, which at this point are fairly empty. Um, so when thinking about, okay, where do we move all this? We had many options. And in particular, just for the database side, um, we have, so we start with Heroku Postgres and we're like, well, we could use RDS. Um, we could use uh, some managed service by some of these companies. Um, what do we do? And I'm sure that many of you are professionals working in many companies where very often uh, we talk about build versus buy. You know, am I going to build this thing from scratch, like spend hours and days, uh, etc., uh, to build my own solution, or am I just going to buy something from a vendor, throw money at the problem, and that's it? 
Um, and generally, when we work in a company, we are going to buy because engineers uh, cost money, because we tend to pay them a lot if they're good, um, and also because we don't have that many on the market. Uh, and also because even if you have really good engineers, it's going to be difficult uh, to match a really good product. Heroku Postgres is really awesome, and building something equivalent uh, if you're a small team is almost impossible. Now, here, in that case, in that particular scenario, uh, you know, we're not spending investor money. Well, maybe we are, but we also are the investor. So it was literally our money paying all that. So in that case, it's not really, you know, build versus buy. It's build or work extra hours so that you can buy and pay the bills for the things you're buying. You know, like if, we, if currently we are paying one grand a month in hosting costs, uh, now, if we build something that only costs, I don't know, 100, now we're saving 900 a month. Uh, and if we're, if we're not saving that money, well, it means that we're, you know, working extra hours in our day jobs or something like that to pay these 900. So in that case, we decided, okay, let's see if we can build, uh, do as many things as we can, like ourselves, bring everything back in-house. So what we've done is that we moved from Heroku to Kubernetes, which might seem a kind of a crazy thing to do, but uh, we both, like uh, my partner and I, uh, are Kubernetes experts, so that was not a problem. Uh, we moved from Postgres to CNPG, which I'm going to talk about really soon, and on the data layer, we went on ZFS. So, um, meanwhile, uh, I think this cluster, hopefully, yep, the cluster is up and running, so that's awesome. All right, so uh, Heroku to Postgres, you know, there isn't much to say about that. Uh, well, many people were like, wow, that's, that seems, you know, very ambitious and over-engineered. Do you really want to put your very simple website on Kubernetes? Uh, well, yeah, the website itself is fairly simple, but there is a lot of things behind the scenes that use a lot of resources. Again, there is a lot of nightmare fuel stories about the eBay API, which I'm not going to tackle today. Uh, there is also a little bit of machine learning. Uh, we have some uh, um, image classification on the postcards to detect certain types of postcards and whatnot. Um, so again, it's not super complicated, but since we're both Kubernetes experts, that seemed like not a problem at all. Uh, and also we wanted to be able to move easily later if we wanted. Uh, today, the website is running on uh, Hetzner, which is uh, a German cloud provider which is really cheap, um, and, but even really cheap might end up being too expensive. And we're actually seriously thinking of running that, you know, back at home on a home lab uh, with servers behind, you know, your home fiber connection to save even more money. That's, that's how scrappy we need to be on that project. And also, of course, uh, you know, maybe you've seen that thing. Um, so being able to run your own Kubernetes cluster is always extremely satisfying. Uh, joke aside, just to be clear, if we had not been uh, Kubernetes experts, we probably would not have uh, decided to move that project to Kubernetes. Okay, now on the database side, um, we had a lot of uh, conversations and brainstorming, uh, and uh, basically uh, we decided to go with CNPG because the really, you know, elevator pitch explanation around CNPG is that um, it lets you, you know, assuming you are, I would say, a normal developer who has not like a black belt in Postgres, DBA, whatever, uh, it's going to let you run a production PostgreSQL database on Kubernetes with replication, with backups, with lots of really cool features. You know, all the things you want in a production database, uh, CNPG will make that available uh, at your fingertips. Um, so for instance, you can do this, uh, you know, with, uh, you just have, what, eight lines of YAML, and these eight lines of YAML, like this manifest, if you apply it on a Kubernetes cluster with CNPG, this is going to create uh, a Postgres cluster with a primary and a replica. Uh, and I think we have a demo for that. Okay, not so fast. Um, but actually, um, uh, now that we have this up and running, I think I need to install a couple of things. Um, so I need to... Okay, install ZFSPV. Copy. 
uh, paste. All right. Uh, then we need to install CNPG itself. Copy. All right. Paste. Uh, then we need to install Rancher Local Path. I'll explain why later. Uh, copy paste. Then for the backups, we're going to need uh, an object store. Uh, so this is going to create uh, a bucket, like an S3 compatible bucket uh, on Linode. And I really hope th this part works because I only tried it once. Okay, create the backup. And normally this is going to create a key dot da 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 dot json. Yeah, okay, perfect. Uh, great. Uh, what else do we need? Now create some databases. Yes, okay, so we're getting there. Um, yeah, so we can literally uh, create uh, the database by doing so kubectl apply dash f, let me show you like cluster mini more. See exactly the, the YAML we had on the slide. I'm going to kubectl apply this. And uh, now I'm going to do watch kubectl clusters and pods. Uh, sorry, get better. Okay, so you can see on top, I have the, the cluster object. Um, so that's uh, basically uh, the, um, sorry, up, oh, there we go. Um, so you see it's a setting up primary. So this is the CRD, the custom resource managed by CNPG. Uh, now it is running a first pod to initialize the database. That's done. So now we're going to see the primary, minimal one. So that's the primary. Once the primary will be up, it's going to set up the secondary, well, the replica. There we go. Um, so I think when we see, I'm always getting worried when I see pending because I'm like, oh, wait, oh, there we go. I think it was waiting for the volume to be provisioned. Uh, and uh, So what kind of storage is it using at the moment? Uh, let's give it, oh, see, I lied. I said that in one minute we would get a cluster with a you know, primary replica and everything, and it's been one and a half minute and the damn thing is still not up. Uh, what's going on? Uh, there we go, almost. Now we're waiting for the replica uh, to come up. What's kind of interesting is that the different phases, phases you can see them in, in the pods and the logs uh, can tell you what's happening and when what's going wrong, if anything goes wrong. Uh, there we go. Now the, yeah, there we go. Okay, it took two minutes. In two minutes, we have uh, a cluster and now we can do stuff like, uh, okay, you know what? I'm going to fire up Tmux so I can have multiple things at the same time. Um, so there is a Cupcuttle CNPG um, plugin and I can do stuff like, uh, um, let's see, uh, CNPG, uh, Cupcuttle CNPG, psql uh, minimal. That means, whoops, uh, right, sorry, that's because I need to set my cube config. Cube config da, 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 da. Okay, uh, like I said, cnpg psql minimal. This is, you know, I, I give me just like the psql uh, shell because I want to do some things on my database, like uh, mm, I want to uh, create a table, uh, Hello, uh, I, uh, is it like that or the other way around? Uh, text. Okay, ooh, I just created a table. Look at me, I'm a DBA now. Um, so um, that's, that's really convenient because often when you have uh, a database somewhere, you need to go and fetch the credentials. Here, what's happening is that CNPG has created secrets um, with, uh, okay, I'm sorry, the, the, uh, ah, okay, Tmux is messing up with my colors, I do apologize for that. Um, so it's, um, it's creating secrets, uh, and minimal app contains all the connection information for 
the database. Uh, and so instead of having to get that connection information and pass the arguments, etc., the plugin makes that uh, super easy for us. Um, all right. Um, CNPG kind of you know follows CRG best practices. What that means in concrete terms is that you can use stuff like cup cuttle wait uh, to wait for the cluster to come up. So that if you're scripting something, it, it's going to be really easy you know to wait until the the cluster has been provisioned. Um, these are my top four CNPG uh, commands. Uh, so, you know, do a one-shot backup, uh, promote uh, to do a, a failover or a switchover, uh, psql and status. Status is going to give you a bajillion uh, like informations about the cluster state. And, you know, these are, pr if you're not used to Postgres, this is probably not going to tell you much, but you can see the, um, uh, the replication log status, um, you can see the, 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 the certificates and when they're going to expire. Like, um, you know, again, if you, if you haven't um, been running Postgres in production at this point, you might be like, hey, what is this really interesting? But I promise that if you have been operating Postgres, this is gold.